This is an MRI machine that uses no radiation to give us such beautiful and detailed images of the human anatomy. And this is a CT X-ray machine that can give us amazing details about the density of the organs in the body. This is important because we can calculate how the radiation will behave inside the patient's body. The problem is that CT images lack these beautiful details that the MRI images have, but they can be used for complicated radiation calculations. While on the other hand, the MRI images can't be used for radiation calculations, but we can see the tumors, understand their biology, and be extremely accurate in knowing their location and shape. So the big challenge is, is there a way we can achieve these two different images at the same time in one place and without the need of using radiation? And here is where we needed AI. So let me take you on a trip. So we are outside Spectronic Medical, a Swedish company leading the field in using AI and MRI images to create something special. And this thing has become so special and big in medicine that it has its own field name right now. It's called MRI only. The MRI only technology is being used every day in many countries and one of them is Sweden. Therefore, me and my friends Alton and Yasser decided to learn more about it from Spectronic. So here we have Jonathan and Fabian, AI software developers that will show us around and explain some of their technology. Unfortunately, along the way Yasser found out about their VR technology and this happened. <laughs> and this is Carl Severson, the founder and CEO of Spectronic Medical and has a PhD in medical physics. Fun fact about Carl, he did a swimming challenge started from Denmark to Sweden and it took him only two hours. Now first, I wanted to ask Carl, why is the MRI-only concept so important? For the first time, treatments can be made using high-quality MR images only, without any conventional CT. But what perhaps is the most important with this technology is that it opens up to use the full potential of MRI in radiotherapy. See, the concept of how they are using AI is very simple and intuitive to understand, yet it's very elegant. Here's a clip of Jonathan explaining to us how it works. Okay, so we have an MR image. And we take this MRI image, we feed it into the AI algorithm, and out comes a synthetic CT. A CT image created entirely from an MR image. So basically, this is what happens. You have MRI images, and then you take them and feed them into this AI model. And then this AI model does some math and transformations on the images, and then converts them to an artificial or a synthetic CT images. These images can then be used just as well as the CT images for radiation and treatment calculations, with no need to expose the patient to any X-ray radiation through this entire process. And not only that, see what Spectronic and other researchers realize is that this is what a typical patient's care path or workflow looks like. Before the patient starts the radiotherapy treatment, first they get an MRI scan to get detailed images of their anatomy then a CT scan, and usually not on the same day, to get the density images. Then these images have to be combined and aligned on top of each other, and we call this process registration. And that can be very difficult sometimes. Here is a clip of Fabian explaining a bit about it. If you watch this, this is like a traditional CT and uh, MR image. You see like they're, they're very disjointed in the space. One of the very big differences that we, that we can see is that these are perfectly on top of each other. So now after the registration process is done, the doctors will start drawing and delineating where the cancer and healthy organs are. And that could take an even longer time because the doctors have to be very careful about the shape and size of the tumor and the healthy organs surrounding it. And then finally, we can start with the treatment planning. But with the help of AI technology, we can do this instead. The patient gets an MRI scan, then the AI immediately creates synthetic CT scans and so all of a sudden you have saved time on not getting a CT scan and don't need to register the images. So the doctors can just start delineating and we can start the treatment planning. So the AI technology saved us time, money, no need to expose the patient to radiation and reduce the waiting list or load on the CT scanners in the hospital. There is basically no need to let the patient go through an inefficient process anymore. All right, so now you might be thinking, okay, so all I need is just get an AI and then that's it. Well, hold on, there is a catch. See, a big part of the challenge of working with AI and developing it is that you need a large amount of data. You need a large amount of data to train the models on the patient's anatomy and patterns so that later on we take this model and apply it to new patients and hopefully get the same results. 
but someone has to check and validate the AI's work and integrate it into the medical field, take care of the software updates, and also make sure it works on different MRI scanners. So you basically need an expert on medical AI to know what cases and patients this AI can and cannot be used for. Cutting edge AI. Yeah, definitely not this guy. What I'm talking about is someone like Christian. He is a medical physicist with a PhD in MRI only workflow and research medical AI. Fun fact about Christian, he did 8,000 pull-ups last year. So I wanted to ask Christian, what does he have to do when he receives a new medical AI product from a company? When we receive an AI model from a company, we need to realize the fact that this model has not been trained on our clinical data. It has been trained on data that comes from one place or several places. It's therefore of importance that you evaluate this model on your clinical data to see that the model uh, has the performance that you uh, would expect it to. We also need to think about what happens when we upgrade our imaging modalities, our CTs, our MRIs. Is the data the same as it was in the beginning or has there been some drift in the data that might uh, affect the model? It's therefore a good practice to have some quality assurance in place when you do such upgrades. And I also wanted to ask Christian to give advice to future medical AI researchers based on his experience. And this is what he said. I think the collaboration is an important thing uh, you need to consider when doing such projects. The reason for that is that we live in what we call the clinical wilderness. And the clinical wilderness is quite different to your well-curated Kaggle data set that you download with a press uh, on your finger. In order for a model or some product that you develop to be useful in the clinic, that will mostly be determined by how generalizable that model is to the clinical data, how well it handles outliers, and stuff that might not be uh, in the training data and the response of the clinic from that. With that said, I really encourage you to pursue your projects and to collaborate with the hospital personnel um, so that you can work together and hopefully get access to real clinical data so that you in the end can try out your model in clinical trials. And from hearing Christian talking, get me very curious about how Spectronic in this case sees the future of using medical AI in the field of MRI and so on. So I had to ask Carl about it. We are creating the technology that opens up for personalized and adaptive treatment strategies. And we believe the future lies in treatments that are tailored for each specific patient based on detail and functional information generated from MRI. The things that we do with AI today are amazing, but what we envision that can be done in the future is just mind blowing. By the way, guys, I would leave links to both Christian and Spectronic Medical if you have any questions for them or you would like to know more about their research. As you can see, AI is being integrated more and more in medicine, solving new challenges, trying to discover new research and developing older methods. These are very important things in order for us to be able to win the war on cancer. Thank you so much for watching to the end and I hope to see you in the next video.